Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All the time. Genesis, book of Genesis, chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. How many of y'all know who Noah was? You know who Noah was? Anybody? Mm -hmm. You know, Noah was a preacher for the Lord, and uh, God called Noah because God saw that everything that we did as men and women wasn't for him, it was for ourselves. He didn't create us for that reason. He created us to know who he was so that we could learn the right way and that we would live. Everybody know who Adam and Eve were? Okay, well, Adam was the first man and Eve was the first woman. And God put them on this earth. They were the very first ones. He put them on this earth. And he told them, you can eat of any tree in the garden, but that tree over there, which was the tree of knowledge, which would show you what was good and what was bad. But God didn't want us to understand what was bad. He wanted us to just be over all the animals and all of the vegetation, keep the garden for them, and just listen to him. 
They say, y'all don't touch that tree. Y'all can do anything else y'all want. And Eve ended up getting tempted by the devil. And the devil caused her to eat from that tree. And when she did, she caused Adam to eat from that tree. So we were all cursed from there. God said, because you've done wrong, I'm kick you up out of this garden, and now you'll see death. Mm -hmm. That's why you see people dying now. That's why we can't live forever anymore. Because we, we took and disobeyed God. That was the first time, the first sin to ever come about. After that, Adam and Eve had a child when they got kicked out. And then that child ended up killing his brother. So that was the first time murder was committed. Mm -hmm. This is all due to the fact that the enemy would cause us to not listen to God. So now here we go 6,000 years later. And hardly anybody knows who God is. They know what religion is. They know about going to church, but they don't know about serving God. If they did, then they would act accordingly. Then there would be nobody fighting against one another, nobody lying to one another, nobody disrespecting one another, and nobody trying to do what they want to do for their own heart. So God brought Noah into the world. But at the time he brought Noah into the world, he realized that this world was continually wicked because now we thousands of years later almost. And he says, now I don't like what I'm seeing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy every living being on this planet. I'm going to kill them all with a flood. And he flooded the whole earth, but before he did that, he saw that Noah was like loving him. So he saw, hey, I'm going to keep you, but I want you to go preach to them and tell them I'm about to destroy this world. And they're probably not going to listen, but whosoever will listen to you, I want you to build this big old boat because I'm about to flood this earth. And they had never even seen rain. So God, when he told Noah this, there was never any rain at all. So what it was unheard of to hear about water, he said, go preach to him and tell him. And Noah preached for 127 years because Noah lived for 600 some years. 600 some years. I think God called him when he was 500 years old. See how long we used to live back then? It wasn't just 80 or 90 or 100. It was six, 700 years. And, and Noah preached for 127 years and not one person listened to him. Everybody was out doing whatever they wanted to do. So Noah built that ark, and him and the seven other members of his family got into that ark. God caused the flood and flooded the whole earth. And Noah called in two animals, two by two. So he saved two, each of each animal so that they could uh, reproduce, and him and his family. And there were the only eight people left on this earth. Now, after God flooded the earth, he told, he told Noah, he said, I'll never flood the earth again, but the next time I'll do it by fire. Y'all see all the fires going on now? <laughs> Jesus said, when I come, you'll see wars, and you'll hear rumors of wars, and there'll be great earthquakes, and there'll be people coming after each other, and people killing one another. That's what's going on right now. Jesus is due to come back. Amen. So pay attention to what I'm going to tell you today, because it may save your life. Because these people out here getting crazy. They ain't got God. Mm -hmm. They don't care about nothing but themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody's doing out there. Just like in the days of Noah, they didn't pay attention when the preacher said, hey, get God, because he's coming back. He's about to destroy everything, and y'all ain't going to see it the way y'all want to see it. When everything's come crumbling down, you'll have nobody to run to but God. Okay? Amen. <clears throat> Genesis 6, 1 through 9. Now it came about, when men began to multiply on the face of the land, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. We like to think that people are good people. But in God's eyes, he says, that little thing that's pumping inside of your chest, every time it wants something, it'll do whatever it takes to get it. So everybody, just like you kids, they go after what they want. They don't care who they hurt to do. And God saw this. He said, because y'all have sinned against me and I booted y'all out of the garden, now everybody's going for self. They may care about their families. This is my mom, by the way. They may care about their families, they may care about their children, but in the end, every man and woman that walks this earth only cares about what they want. They don't care about other people. They'll show kindness here and there, but it's not true love. It's not God's love. God say, you're only doing that to look good, or you're only doing that to get something back from someone, but you're not doing it because you love me, because if you love me, you'll do it because I told you to do it, and you won't look for anything back. You see where I'm coming from? Y'all understand? Okay. So it came about when man began to multiply on the face of the land, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was always evil. And the Lord regretted, regretted that he had made man on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. This is God. So the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of this earth, yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. For the Lord regretted that he had ever made man. But Noah found favor 
in the eyes of the Lord. For Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time, and Noah walked with God. God's wrath against sin is furious. Sin. Sin is against God. That means you're not trying to figure out who he is. That means that you believe that it's going to be okay. When I was young, I thought I was going to live forever. When I was young, I'd get hurt. I'd be right back two, three days later, I'm fine. When you're young, you can break a bone. Bone feel like that. The older you get, the more your body starts failing. Or in life, when you start going through troubles, you are ladies. So with men, you're going to go through troubles. People use people. And they use your heart. And you follow this thing. You don't follow him. So you don't stay wise to the dangers that's out there. Because see, there's not only people that's out there. There's spirits that's out there. They don't want you to do what God wants you to do. So it'll cause you to get put yourself in a trap. People get in trouble. Kids nowadays, they're going in schools. They're shooting one another. It's not just them. They're listening to him. They're not listening to him. All because they think they're listening to this. Well, you made me feel bad. You came against me. You said something bad about me. So I'm going to act evil towards you. That ain't nothing but the devil. God's wrath against sin is furious. It is why we see all these terrible things happening in this day. For Jesus warned us that he would return. But before his second coming, he warned us there would be troubles upon this earth and the people in it that would exceed anything or any time before. Pay attention to what God says about those who have been disobedient. It says in Romans 1, 28 and 29, furthermore, this is for anybody that don't know who God is, furthermore, since they thought it foolish to know who God was, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. But they are all filled with unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, jealousy, murder, anger, and lies. They are a sinful people who know not God. I tell everybody simply, if you want to know God, all you got to do is ask me yourself, Lord, I want to know you. Lord, show me what it is that I need to do to please you. Not please myself. What would you have me do to please you? And then you wait. You continue to do the best that you can. As young men and women, and as elders, you continue to do the best that you can. Because you don't know the right way. Only God knows the right way. But sooner or later, he says, if your heart is truly in place to know who I am and to do what's right about me so you can please me, so you ain't got to worry about death, you ain't got to worry about nobody harming you. You ain't got to worry about nobody coming against you. And when things do come against you, you'll know how to handle them so that you do them the right way instead of the way that you know how to do it. Because I'm going to tell you now, ain't nothing that I can do, ain't nothing that you can do that ain't no man or woman ever done in 6,000 years on this earth. But yet, they're in the dirt now, David. Why? Because they probably didn't pay attention to God. So here's what I say when it comes to me as a person. And I say, you know what, Lord? I want to make sure that I don't sin against you and I don't want to sin against any human being to cause you to be mad at me. So I say of the sin, is it that you wish to kill me that I might die? For as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And of that day and hour, nobody knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For just as in those days before the flood, they were all eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. They paid no attention, just like what's going on right now out there. Ain't nobody paying no attention. We see all these funerals going on and everybody crying and holding up candles and saying prayers and throwing up balloons like they got God. That's not God. That's just the way it goes. Oh, it hurt my feelings that that child died. It hurt my feelings that he came up in the house and shot him. It hurt my feelings that that serial killer did what he did. Well, if it hurt your feelings, pray to God for that <coughs> Don't pray and show everybody around you that you got God, because that's not the way to do it. God said, if you got me, you'll show me by the way you act, and by the way you come. In other words, by your fruits, not by your mouth, because it says in the Bible, God sees them talk about him on their lips, but they do not honor him in their heart. <coughs> so you got a lot of people out there looking like they got God. Mama's getting it. Mama's getting it. God wants to bless you. <coughs> Do we not see this world and the people in it? Just as those who mocked and disbelieved know. 
he preached righteousness unto the Lord before the flood came upon the earth. Yet Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, but only eight people survived that flood. And out of the 127 years that Noah preached to the people, it was only him and his family that survived. Ain't that amazing? Y'all heard about when Jesus got crucified and killed him? You know about that, Lord? Mm -hmm. Did you see how they did him? That was his own people. That was God's people. Just like the people that, that claim they got God. Yeah, it was it was God's people. God chose the people, just like he chose us. You chose, you hear that, believe it or not, even though in your heart you said, I did that myself. God caused you to come here. Why? Because he got control of everything. See, we're not as wise as him. We don't, we don't see spiritually. God shows us how to see spiritually. That's the only reason why I can tell you what I'm telling you. See, now in the flesh, fleshly, I go by this and go by this, the same way y'all do. But see, God shows us how to do it with our spirit, the thing that keeps us alive, the thing that heals us, the thing that protects us. He puts his spirit upon us. When you saw Jesus get baptized, you see when he got baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, and it say the spirit came upon him like a dove and it remained on him. Well, see, Jesus is the one now that gives us the spirit. But he had to come. He came as God in the flesh to show us all how to walk. Yet they didn't want to hear him the people in the churches because they said, wait a minute now. We got us all sewn up. We can wear our pretty robes. We can sit here and let everybody appreciate us, and yet they'll do it by the law. And Jesus said, I didn't, I didn't come to not fulfill the law. I didn't come to ban the law. I came to fulfill it, but I want to show you how to get closer to my father. This is the way you must walk. And then he died for us. So everybody says, Jesus died for my sin. But Jesus said, follow me. How many of them are following Jesus? Not many. They may even know the lines. They may even see the Bible. They may even see shows. Ain't nobody truly trying to seek God out. They're still doing what they want to do. God doesn't like that. He said, you're still disobedient. You can't fool me. I'm God. You may fool a human being and say, look at me. I can do God. No, you can't. You can't fool God. You got to be real with God. You got to understand it. In any moment, man, you know Children are dying just as much as elders. It, it's no longer, when I was coming up, there weren't many children that were dying. They die all the time now. Because everybody believes they're going to live forever. Everybody believes if I can see it with my eyes, that means I can get out of the way of danger. But what is the dangers that God may allow the enemy to come and do you, and you not see it? If you don't know God, you don't know. And then you'll hope that, well, maybe my mom might be there for me. Maybe my brother or sister might be there for me. God said, what if I put something on you that nobody can take off but me? He said, I bet you you'll start crying for me now. That's why you see everybody when they're mourning and they got somebody that died or somebody that's sick, they say, well, just say a prayer for me. Why would you ask a sinner to pray for you and you ain't even got God? What do you think God does? God <coughs> says, I never hear the prayer of a sinner unless they repent, which means they know who they are, they know they're guilty for their sins, and they have come to me and laid it out and said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you to help me. I need you to show me the way so that I may please you. That's the only way he hears a prayer. So even when I see people say grace, you ever sit at home and you, you say grace when, before you eat dinner? He said, I don't hear the prayer of a sinner unless they repent. So I ask people all the time, I said, why are you even sitting there saying grace if you don't have God? Well, because it makes me feel like I got God. There you go, feeling again with that heart. It's not spiritual. Yes, ma'am. Um, every time I eat dinner, I say a verse for the Bible. Mm -hmm. You have to have the Amen. Do you pray to God yourself, though? Mm -hmm. All the time. Ask him when you're praying from now, ask him to show you how to do it the right way. Tell him that you really want him in your heart. And I guarantee you, it'll be between you and him. <coughs> that's what you got to do. But that's a good thing. That's good that, that you got it in the household. But again, like I said, I was raised in the church, too. But it didn't, you know, as the older we get, the more wicked we get, because in the end, we let this take over. Uh -huh. So I'm giving you a clue into something that I already know, which is, is you continue to ask God to bless you and your family. You continue to ask him that your family draw even nearer to him just as much as you, but you continue to ask him for yourself. Lord, show me how I must please you. Because in the end, when he comes to judge us, and you say, he said, well, why'd you do that wrong? You ain't going to be able to point no finger to somebody. You ain't going to say, I'm going to judge them. I'm asking you. Why don't you do the right thing? So you make sure that you stay straight with God because it's between you and him. Shall I not, here's a question we should ask ourselves, shall I not invest in the building of God's household that all who would enter might be saved? But just as Noah walked with God and lived, 
Should not all who claim to be God's people be able to live to? But just as God waited patiently in the days of Noah while that ark was being built, so has God also given favor to all who believe in him and are tried by fire and not die. We're going to have our troubles. Every single one of us got troubles. I go through the same thing you guys go through. I can sit here and talk all day about how good God is, but that's because I know he is. Because half the troubles that I go through may not be your troubles as a child. Our troubles are much greater. But because of God, we stand here. Every single one of these elders that you see in here today, you look at them and you say to yourself, oh man, I'm old to you. So I know you probably say, well, wow, they're, they're older people. And you think to yourself that you may not have to ever go through what they're going through, but I'll say this, how much more faith do they have than any one of us? Because they sit here right now, they ain't at home like you guys. They ain't at home like me. They here. Yet they still hold on to God just as strongly as any one of them. Why? God causes them to be able to sit here and make it. God calls them to be able to come up in here and say, well, I'm going to listen to your word and not think about all the troubles that I'm going through. That's faith. You better get it. Because at the end, God going to test you. Each individually, he knows you better than you know yourself because he created you. And when he tests you, he'll put something on you that nobody else can help you with. And you'll be sitting there crying. I've had a million of friends. I've had a lot of family, and I'm going to tell you, there have been things and troubles that come upon me that I've never been able to count on them for because they didn't have the power, they didn't have the strength, they didn't have the money, they didn't have nothing to help me. And I had to break down my hands and knees and cry. But most people, when God touch them like that, they'll break down and they'll cry and they'll pray to them. But as soon as the trouble's gone, they go back along their own little walk again, being foolish, not understanding God caused that to make you pay attention. Now, who am I but just a foolish man without God? But with the Lord's grace have I found the gift of love, which is Jesus Christ, to be preached. And just as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, and like the lightning that comes from the east and is visible even in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. That's Jesus. Can you hear me say Son of Man? And if the Lord did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood and on all its godly people, if God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them an example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter, then how much more should we all be mindful to obey the Lord and bathe in his mercy? I say to sin, if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, and he cast them into hell and committed them to the pits of darkness reserved for judgment, then how much more will those who are disobedient be killed in a likewise manner. For even the beast, that's the devil, will be captured. And with him the false prophets who perform signs in his name, for they continue to fool those who have believed in their flesh and those who worship worldly things in the image of the beast. So shall they all be thrown alive into the lake of fire which burns with brimstone. That's the end. Everybody that's disobedient to God can't say they don't know it. They, they can't say that they don't know about it. He's saying in the end, every single one of them going to follow the devil into that lake of fire and be forever, eternally tormented. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have everlasting life. Right. See, I know like these guys know right here, this life right here ain't going to last. But I want to be able to come back. I want to have my spirit like Jesus. I want to be here forever right. with no sickness, no pain, no worries, and God loving me. I don't want to be in some fire forever living forever in fire? Can you imagine that? He said, that's what I'm going to do to the ones that's disobedient. They may not know me now. They can play and travel along like everything's going to be okay. Go ahead and believe that. How do you believe that and then you also believe that God created you or not know that God has the ultimate plan? God is over everything. God watching everything that you got going on. God know what you're thinking right now. He know what's in your heart. We can't fool him. How long are we going to continue to fool ourselves and play like fools? Think about that. Hmm. So shall they all be thrown alive in the lake of fire which burns with brimstone, and the rest will be killed with the sword which will come from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. That's Jesus. See, the last time he came, he came to give his life for all of us. Everybody knows John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. It's not about wearing a cross. It's not about saying, I, 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 Jesus saved me. Jesus didn't save you if you're not willing to be saved. 
which means you have to know what God wants and please him, else you're just talking. You don't know it, but you're just as bad as the ones that don't even care about what, what, what happened and what God did. But when Jesus returns, he ain't coming to die for us. He coming to get everybody that was wrong. Everybody that ain't trying to have God, they're done. They're going to see troubles upon this earth and not know where to run. Soon you're going to see people running and going to hide because of the earthquakes and the buildings crumbling and the water ain't no more, ain't no more electricity. What everybody going to do then? They can't go to the safety of their houses and count on their bank account anymore. They can't count on people helping them out. Ain't nobody trying to help nobody now. People running up in places, robbing places, even subways and gas stations. You wonder why they're doing that. You say, hmm, because they just hard off. They ain't got nothing. Everybody going to be that way. Not just them. Everybody who's disobedient will go through that. We'll go through it, but we'll be safe. He said, I'm going to protect y'all. I'm going to make sure y'all okay. Don't worry. I don't want you to worry. I'm your God. I'm a mighty God. I've already told you this. All you got to do is read the book of Revelation. Dude. So read Matthew. Get a chance when you get home. Read Matthew 24. Jesus will tell you what's going on right now. He's like, woo, he's coming back soon. Look at all. This is a bad place now. <laughs> Be grateful unto God and thankful for his mercy. Be humble. Humble means not having no pride. Humble means everything that I've been telling you right now, you take it seriously and you say, mm, you know what? I better start thinking about God and quit thinking about myself because this is really dangerous. These, this world is really dangerous. These people are really dangerous. I don't want to be like them, God. I want you to see me different. I want you to have favor upon me. Lord, I want you to protect me. I want you to protect my health. I want you to protect my family. I want you to make sure that I'm okay and that any danger I can't see, you protect me from that danger. Yeah, yeah. The Lord jealously desires the spirit which he hath made to dwell in us because he gives us a greater grace. Therefore, God is against the proud but gives grace to the humble. He said Noah was a righteous man mm -hmm. and he walked with God. Let me tell you, every single one of us in here, we're going to sin. Every single one of us in here going to do something that God don't like. Amen. God is merciful and he loves us. He loves us more because we listen to him. He loves those that don't listen to him less than that because he puts things on them so that they either pay attention or they die not paying attention. But Noah was humble. He didn't have no pride. He said, you know what, Lord? I'm going to seek you out. Same message I'm telling you, God. Lord, I'm going to seek you out. Me and my family, we're going to do whatever it is to please you. So when God saw the earth was wicked and every man was for himself, he saw Noah had his heart open and was humble. And he was trying to follow him. So he said, you know what? You and your family, get ready. Build that ark, because I'm about to bring some water on this earth. I know you ain't never seen no water, but I'm about to bring water upon this earth. Just like he told us he's going to destroy it with fire this time. We ain't seen, well, I ain't seen no big fire. I ain't seen no great earthquake, Lord. I'm seeing a lot of earthquakes now. Right? Seeing a lot of famine. Food ain't growing no more. Drought, water, and floods. They just had a flood in South Carolina. They just had one there on Texas. Ain't nobody paying attention to the signs. God say, pay attention to the signs. I've already told you about this. Everything in this Bible has already come true. All you're waiting for now is for him to come back. But before he comes back, there will be great troubles that come upon the world. Everybody will be against everybody. Everybody will be warned. Everybody will be talking about this and that. When I was coming up, you wouldn't even dare even say anything wrong to a cop. People run up to cops now shoot them. How bad have we become? God said this was going to happen. I'll give you over to a corrupt mind so that you do things that you ought not do. Why? Because you do not obey me. And that stands for each and every individual. And you imagine how many people of all these nations that are here right now, 6,000 years later from the first sin that we disobeyed in the garden, imagine how bad <coughs> we are now. <coughs> Think about it. Things that he said that are good, you call evil. And things that you call evil, you call good. God said a lot of things about evil things that we accept now. We'll watch things and say, oh, that's acceptable, because they accept it. No, I don't. We're just foolish. Yeah. We don't have God. We have the smartest people in the world. They can get straight A's all through school, go through school and have a 4.0 and be one of the greatest people out of school. But it ain't nobody smarter than God. God took me, and I ain't even never went to college. Before I came, I was an alcoholic. I was this, I was that. God took me, and he said, I will take the weak things the unwise things of this world, and I will make them wiser than any man. The things I speak to you now, no man hardly knows. Half of the things he gives me, I look at other people and I hear them talking, I say, wow, 
you know all of this information, but you don't know who God is? Do you understand how wise God is? Do you understand if you will please him and do what he called you to do, how wise he will make you? You'll see everything in a totally different world. You won't believe the things that they believe. It is for this very reason that you make every effort to add faith to your goodness and to goodness, <coughs> wisdom. For God's power will give you everything you need for a godly life through the knowledge of Jesus Christ who has called you by his own glory and goodness. And even though the Lord is mighty, he will look kindly on those who listen. Yes. And even though he is an awesome God, remember he sees everything you do from afar. Who are we but foolish people without God? But with God, we are no longer wretched and lost as men and women who do not see. Y'all remember that song, Amazing Grace? Yeah. How sweet the sound. Yeah. <coughs> you say you were once wretched <coughs> and lost, but now you see and now you found. That's what the song is talking about. The person that wrote that song was a sinner. He got abandoned on an island with no one there when he wrote that song. He was a bad person in the beginning. He was a captain of a big old entire army, and then he got lost on an island by himself. He ain't had nothing. And then he realized, you know what? <laughs> now that I can't prove nothing in this world about my money or taking and lording over people and making them do things that I want them to do to make my money and be seen, I have nothing. And he realized how wretched he was. And then he found God. He realized, you know what? Don't lose everything, y'all, to figure out who God is. Don't make God prove who he is to you. Because if he does, it hurts. It hurts bad. It hurts bad enough to make you turn around and say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to quit doing me. Because that fool want to die. Let me do you. That'll be much better life than what I got going on there. I'm tired of all these troubles. I'm tired of all these enemies chasing me. I'm tired of always being paranoid because I did something wrong and there's somebody after me. I'm tired of fighting with people. I'm tired of arguing with people. Show me the right way. Amen. And he will. If you truly believe that, if you truly want that. But he knows whether you're lying or not. For just as Noah and his family found favor in the eyes of the Lord, so will the coming of Jesus be at the end of this age that we should all be saved. Every living being on the face of this earth will be tested, and if they who do not choose God should be mindful that they will go down to the pit like the people of long ago it being the grave. And they will be made to dwell in the earth below as in the ancient ruins, and they will not return or take their place in the land of the living. I said to sin, for a brief moment, you all I wanted to do. But it is with deep regret I can never do you again. For it is the Lord that has caused me to see your wicked ways, which are set up in the image of the devil, who will not fool me any longer. For it is sin that has deceived the people of this world, that they would honor the devil that was wounded by the sword and still yet lives. I'll die no longer. And nor will I give myself to sin any more of my blood. For it is the Lord who has come against sin, exercising all authority on his behalf that all whom he has chosen might be saved. Bless the Lord for all who honor his mighty name. Give him praise for he is worthy. But without God, it's going to be impossible to live. Yet they who come to God must believe that he is Lord and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. For just as Noah preached righteousness, being warned by God about all things not yet seen in holy fear, he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household. And while the whole world was being flooded, he and his family became heirs of righteousness, which is according to God. I'm going to stop right there. Y'all get the gist of what I'm reading. Again, when you pray, pray that the Lord will bless you. He's already got mercy on you. How do you know? Because you're still living. Amen. How many people in this world are still living right now, woke up this morning and still ain't thinking about God? That's his mercy. That's mercy. He don't have to have us living. We ain't doing nothing for him. That's his mercy. That's his grace. Long-suffering patience with us. He was very patient with me for 40 some years. I did what I wanted to do. I did like everybody else. I like to fool people. If I went to church on Sunday, I thought that was good enough for God. Y'all remember what I'm telling you? Amen. I prayed to 
appreciate you all having this weekend. And I pray that the Lord's message was ingested and retained by you. I love you. And y'all have a blessed weekend. Amen.